laughing. What was that? Chew Holly, just a little something blue, especially for you. I love you to the moon and back. Oh, my feet are right, they won't sink in. I've got special things on my heels. <laughs> Yeah. 
Could I ask you all please to stand for the arrival of our bride? everyone. May I take this opportunity to extend a very warm welcome to the beautiful Pennard House on this very special day for Adam and Holly. One of the wonderful things about a wedding is that you get to invite the people who really matter to you. So I know that it means a great deal to our happy couple that you can all be here today to share in their happiness and witness their marriage vows. I'll ask the bridal party, which consists of our four people here and the two bridesmaids behind to remain standing. And the guests, please take your seats. So I'll start with some introductions. My name is Jill Smart and I'm a Deputy Superintendent Registrar for Somerset. And it's my very great pleasure and honour to be here today to conduct your marriage ceremony. My friend and colleague, Tricia, is the registrar and doing all the hard work today. She's here to ensure the legalities of the proceedings, to make sure I get my words right, and she's going to record the details of your marriage in the register where they will remain for all time. I must tell you that the place in which we are now met has been duly sanctioned according to the law of this country for the celebration of marriages. So I'm going to ask our groom to please give me his full name. Adam Charles Smerdin. Thank you. Likewise our bride. Holly Elizabeth Badwin. Lovely. So your ceremony today begins with an ancient tradition that we're going to honour here today. So I now have a very important question of the bride's father, and the response I'm looking for is, I do. <laughs> <laughs> do you, Nolan, give Holly's hand in marriage to Adam? I do. Lovely. Thank you very much. You may take your seat. Best man, take your seat. Ladies, have a seat now. That's okay. And then you can just relax. <laughs> So you will all know far better than us that Adam and Polly have found in each other happiness 
fulfillment and love. And as a consequence of this, they now wish to affirm their relationship and offer to each other the security that comes from legally binding vows sincerely made and faithfully kept. However, before we proceed, I must ask if any person here present knows of any lawful impediment why they should not be joined in matrimony, you should declare it now. That's when we like silence. <laughs> so Adam and Holly, before you are joined in matrimony, it is my duty to remind you of the solemn and binding character of the vows that you are about to make. Marriage in this country means the union of two people voluntarily entered into for life to the exclusion of all others. But more than this, the purpose of marriage is that you may always love, care for and support each other through all the joys and sorrows of life, that love may grow in a relationship of permanent and continuing commitment. So I'm now going to ask you to declare that you know of no lawful reason why you should not be joined in matrimony to each other. So I'm going to look to our groom and ask him to please repeat after me. I declare that I know I declare that I know of no legal reason of no legal reason why I, Adam Charles Smurden why I, Adam Charles Smurden may not be joined in marriage may not be joined in marriage to Holly Elizabeth Badrick. <coughs> Holly Elizabeth Badrick. You'll see that. To Holly Elizabeth Badrick. To Holly Badrick. Elizabeth Badrick, sorry. <laughs> I declare that I know I declare that I know of no legal reason of no legal reason why I, Holly Elizabeth Badrick why I, Holly Elizabeth Badrick may not be joined in marriage may not be joined in marriage to Adam Charles Smurden to Adam Charles Smurden Thank you. Thank you. So you've both declared that you are free to marry and the moment has come for you to make your contract with each other Marriage is a very personal decision, but a large part of its importance comes from its public recognition. So therefore, as our bride and groom make their marriage contract before you all, could I please ask their witnesses, Cynthia and Jackson, to join us? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Right. Thank you. Right. So this is the contractual words that you are making with each other. So I'll ask you at this point to turn and face each other and hold hands. And again, Adam, repeating after me, but speaking your contract to Holly. I, Adam Charles Smurden. I, Adam Charles Smurden. Take you, Holly Elizabeth Badrick. Take, take you, Holly Elizabeth Badrick. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. Lovely. Likewise, Holly. I, Holly Elizabeth Badrick. I, Holly Elizabeth Badrick. Take you, Adam Charles Smurden. Take you, Adam Charles Smurden. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. I think that was all correct. Yes. Thank you very much, witnesses, for your support. Please take your seats. Okay. And you can relax a little okay. Today is the first day of your marriage and the beginning of your future lives together. But what does marriage mean? Marriage provides a structure within its framework of commitment and loyalty to allow your relationship to mature and grow. Clearly, it's important to believe in each other and to acknowledge the continuing responsibility of remaining the entrusted keepers of each other's hopes and dreams. But marriage is not always an easy path. It requires commitment, compassion and the ability to listen. 
Marriage is to learn the art of compromise, for it is better to bend a little than to break. It deserves the wisdom to acknowledge when we are wrong and the strength of character to put things right. Getting married today is a proud confirmation of your love and the beginning of a whole new and exciting chapter. Together as a team, you will be stronger to meet whatever life brings. So now we come to the giving of rings, the traditional way of sealing the marriage contract you've both made. So Brendan, I know, does have the rings. Just hold them there, lovely. The wedding ring is an unbroken circle. It has no beginning and no end. It symbolises an ending and everlasting love. And it is the outward sign of the lifelong promises you are making to each other today. So we'll have Holly's ring, which I'm sure is the small of the two. And if you give that to Adam. And Adam, you're holding it there. Third finger left hand. Just hold it there above the neck. Okay. So again, you are making, saying your ring vows to Holly and repeating after me. This ring represents our love. This ring represents our love. I vow to love you. I vow to love you. And care for you. And care for you. I shall spend my life with you. I shall spend my life with you. And share everything I have with you. And share everything I have with you. And that will be a perfect fit. It is. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> and Holly, you'll take the other ring. Thank you, best man. Take my seat. And again, repeating after me, but speaking your ring vows to Adam. This ring represents our love. This ring represents our love. I vow to love you. I vow to love you. And care for you. And care for you. I shall spend my life with you. I shall spend my life with you. And share everything I have with you. And share everything I have with you. Lovely. Perfect fit. <laughs> okay. So ladies and gentlemen, if you would all please stand. Adam and Holly, you have both made the declarations required by law and solemn and binding promises to each other in the presence of your witnesses, family and friends. May you treasure this trust and responsibility and may you live rich and full lives together. For now, it does give me very great pleasure to announce that you are indeed husband and wife. Your seats while we have the signing of the register. Beautiful. If you would like to come behind the table, probably this side.
guests. Everybody, that means us all.
started the story by saying that I actually seen Holly in her wedding dress earlier on and it did bring me to tears. I cried. And now all my mates cried with me. <laughs> um, right, here we go. Bear with me when you're not very good at this. <laughs> I first met Holly at the Shepton Hospital when she shot out into the world like a bullet out of a gun. <laughs> it wasn't long after that, as a toddler, we quickly, quickly learned that she was very much going to be in control of her own life and everybody else's around her. Amen. <laughs> at the age of four, after being on a walk to the shop with a granddad, they spotted a speeding car, and granddad says, We ought to ring the police. Unbeknownst to him and everybody else on their return, that is exactly what she did. The police then traced the call and then knocked on our door. <laughs> yeah. I used to read her a bedtime story called Policeman Pete. You remember that one? Yes? <laughs> that she loved due to her newfound connection with the police force. <laughs> it had a button on it on the top corner that made a siren sound. And it, where did it go? <laughs> we are we, the siren Sounds. sounds. I don't know the rest of it. On his brain. Yeah, something <laughs> hideous. <laughs> For weeks, I pressed the button each turn of the page and I thought, so I'd spice it up a little bit with some bank robberies, jewel heights and drug raids and car chases. <laughs> then we moved on to Postman Pat. <laughs> Two days later, the neighbours from across the road came across and asked if we could go back to Policeman Feet. They had been tuning in every night, picking up the signal on their baby monitor from our baby monitor. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, I uh, thought that Postman Pat was a little bit tame. <laughs> uh, um, she went to spend the night at her nan's one night, and in a hurry, she ran down the stairs and snapped her arm clean in half. And that was your fault. No, it wasn't. You were in a hurry to get to your nan's. Who's doing this speech? <laughs> And she snapped her arm like a boomerang, and I put a towel over their arm because I was going to pass out. And all she said was, does that mean I can't go to Nan's now? <laughs> and Holly sailed through school, which wasn't a problem because she knew it all before she'd even started. <laughs> and after leaving school, Holly nagged me for a job. But if I had a given her the opportunity, it wouldn't have been long before I, she would have made me redundant and replaced me with something more efficient. <laughs> and Holly has been very committed and conscientious in her working career, of which I am very proud of her. And by the age of 18, Holly realised that nightclubs and alcohol was not for her because she had already started four years early and that was no more. <laughs> Uh, I would also, I would like to welcome Adam and the family. I will now meet them for the first time. I did say, I won't bother to go in the names, but it probably won't last anyway. <laughs> How wrong I was. <laughs> and his two fantastic girls, Savannah and Maddie, who I think Holly's been a perfect stepmother to. Where are they two? Are you all right, girls? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd also like to uh, to thank Ron and Simps for accepting Holly into their family. And I um, I did hear two words a lot last night while single-handedly setting up this venue for you all. <laughs> but I'm sure it wasn't you that they were aimed at, Holly. And there was two words, one, the first one began with C and the F, second one began with F. Anybody idea what it might be, those two words? <laughs> no, no, not at all? No. Not control freak? That <laughs> <laughs> and that is the end of my speech. And I would like you all to stand and raise your glasses. And post the bride and groom.
thank you all first for all coming. Um, God, kind of <laughs> thank you for coming to join us on our special day. So Holly has given me things to say, but I left them at home because there was just too much to say. So I decided to do it all myself. Control freak. <laughs> Yeah, I can't believe I'm actually still here today in front of you. Um, this is probably the only time I'm actually probably going to like, get away with saying these things, so here goes. Um, in front of Holly today, I can't believe how amazing you look. Holly makes me a better me, and for that, I thank you from the bottom of my heart, and I'm proud to call you my wife, and for me to call you my husband. Also, how beautiful do the bridesmaids look? Yeah. Yeah. Madison and Harlow, who've done an amazing job with the flowers. <laughs> and firstly, I'd like to thank Nolan for allowing us to have our special day here. close to both of our hearts. We'd also like to thank the ushers for all their hard work and supporting me and Holly doing everything. <laughs> Brendan and Wayne, two best mates that anyone could ever have. Um, been there through me through highs and lows and I couldn't ask for better best friends. Thank you very much. <laughs> Another brother from a mother, Brendan. Thank you very much. Oh, actually, Brendan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just before you start, mate. Got some for you, mate. Yeah. 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 Time you'll hear my voice, so sorry for shouting at you all. It wasn't my idea, I was told to say it. So, as you'll all know, Holly's a control freak and she wasn't sure my speech was going to cut it. But it is a control freak, and none of us have planned this, as all three of us have just said it. Um, so, she gave me a few things to say. <laughs> Evening do starts in half an hour, guys, so we'll do mine instead. <laughs> Standing here looking at you all, uh, I'd like to say you all scrub up really well, actually, to be perfectly honest with you. But watching you all looking back at me, it's fairly nerve wracking because this really isn't the sort of thing I do, as you probably hear. Um, I, as many have, known as for 12 years. And for the you that don't know him that well, I'd like just to sum him up for you. 
Um, he's a touch shorter than the average person. Um, he can't grow a proper beard, although it has improved in the last couple of years, so I think he might have hit puberty, finally. He's got an earring in both ears, which I'm told's fashion. Maybe, I don't know, it's not me. And he's one of those people that is a terrible drunk. Now let me explain by that. After watching our and his family's beloved extra chiefs play rugby, we headed into Exeter City to go to the pubs to celebrate. It's kind of an end of season stroke Christmas ritual we do pretty much every year. Um, Adam brought his new friend Billy from up here in Shepton just to sort of show him our kind of night out so we could understand. Um, and as Adam always does, looking after his friend, he stopped Billy getting totally drunk by drinking all the alcohol himself. <laughs> Totally selfless kind of guy, as you all know. The passing ambulance crew gave us a disposable sick pot as they thought we might need it on the way home. Um, of which we continued to carry Adam back to my car, put him in the back, and we set off. As making perfect use of said sick pot and telling Billy and Wayne how he was dying. <laughs> now, as has got lots of positives. <laughs> I'm sure he's got some. Hang on a minute, I'll be with you in a minute, guys. It's kind of awkward, that, really, isn't it? Uh, Wayne, got any suggestions? Great friend. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Well, that one's, it's not bad at all. Um, Ad is, and all of his friends locally down with us, obviously down in Torquay and around here, know that it doesn't matter if it's day or night, he's at the end of the phone for us. And if things get that bad, he will drive to us and help us out. So, you know, can't ask better than that. Uh, another one. Rob, any ideas, mate? Lawyer. Okay, yeah, we could do that. Lawyer, mate. He's got our back any time. He'll support us through thick or thin. Doesn't matter what we've done, he's by our side. Bill, come on, mate. You've got one as well, surely. Honest. <laughs> Okay, yeah. <laughs> Whether you want to hear it or not, Ads will tell it as it is. He doesn't wrap it up in any way, he will tell you how it is, basically. And I suppose I'd better give Holly just the last, last chance. So go on, Holly, give me one. Good looking? <laughs> well, three out of four, but I suppose. <laughs> 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 so many of you won't know that myself, Adam and Wayne, Wayne, where are you? Just uh, stand up for me. I am. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we go back a long time and we have many, many stories that we can tell, probably quite a few we can't tell as well, to be honest. But the one that springs to mind was the night that myself and Wayne, for the first time, met Holly. And we've just got to say, doesn't she look beautiful today? That you all agree, looks stunning. <laughs> so to set the scene again, it was another Exeter Chiefs victory, and we head into Exeter after the game to celebrate. Myself and Wayne drinking like we did when we were 20, which clearly was quite a while ago. Um, mm -hmm. Pranking each so. other, and all the rest that goes with it, we won't go there maybe. And that's, well, he wasn't really that night, so we were quite worried about him. Um, we questioned him about this, and he explained how he'd arranged for us to meet his new girlfriend, but not told us. <laughs> to be fair, panic set in, um, because we wanted to make a good impression for him. But for me and Wayne, stringing the most simple sentence together at that point was proving fairly difficult. <laughs> So anyway, after some straight Red Bulls for the caffeine and lots of water, we were ready. It went well. Well, we thought it did. And to seal the deal, Holly gave us a lift home. And while she drove, we commandeered her phone that she was streaming some terrible music to her car, put on Frozen and serenaded her from the back seat whilst texting her friends that we had never met before random text messages. <laughs> so any of the bridesmaids that got any of them that day, we're really sorry. Well, no, we're not sorry at all, but it was us. All right, not Holly. Now, I'm pretty much done. Can't go without mentioning the stag do. The destination was Newquay. Uh, we went to Adrenaline Quarry and tried coastering, which for those of you who don't know, consists of climbing and jumping off numerous platforms at differing heights. 
the highest being the aptly named 10 meter widow maker, which Holly had a heart attack when I said I was going to take him off the top of. Uh, we did the gravity defying swing, the zip wires, and we went to the Retallic Resort where we stayed. Went on a flow rider, inflatable wipeout course, and we tried wakeboarding. And we went karting, and we did quite a lot actually, it was, we were knackered. Um, plus your normal nights out. However, when we got home, I did get an email from the resort saying that when they cleaned one of the lodges, um, they had found an item of clothing, and for £6.50, they were sending it to us. I'm pleased to say I paid my £6.50, and I can reunite ads with his beloved Speedos. <laughs> <laughs> I need to wash it, it's all right, I believe. I'll uh, wear them later and show you how good he looked. And most of Cornwall saw him as well, bless him. Um, so that's pretty much done. Um, Ads and Holly, Mr. and Mrs. Smurden. I'm sorry it wasn't a song, a poem, or a rap. I'm sorry I didn't learn an instrument for you. <laughs> um, but the one thing I can say is all you need is love. Doesn't matter what life throws at you, love is all you need. And with that in mind, can everyone stand up for me for the last time, please? Whether you're here with a loved one, a friend or on your own, can you hold hands with the person beside you? Maybe put your arm around them or just give them a hug. Anything like that. Yeah, of course you're doing that. Of course you're doing that. Can I present to you, and can we all have our glasses raised as well? And you, and you, Mr. and Mrs. Spurden, Adam and Holly. Let's get party. <laughs> Now's my time to disembark. The truth brings out her full remarks. You can't take back.
company on the dance floor for 